Welcome back. So last year, November 18th, this Airbus Latam aircraft went ahead and hit a fire truck, if you guys remember, when they were taking off to a response drill. So the CIAA in Peru went over the final report. I want to go over it from the firefighter's point of view. So this is the Rescue 3. If you see any R3 on the maps, that's this vehicle here. This is what ended up happening so it took off the whole front end basically all there was 1500 gallons of water in this fire truck all the water went flying it took the wing out of that aircraft here it is up close this is a step two people were killed in this and then this you can see where the cab is and then this is the engine compartment back here so the firefighters sit on these front wheels way in the front and then here they have to make the decision of do they go ahead and help their fellow firefighters or do they help the passengers? So they did continue responding the vehicles that were not in the accident and put out this fire from impinging. You can see it almost burned through the aircraft. And then you can see the slides were deployed as people evacuated this aircraft. Uh, total tragedy in Peru. This is the engine and different parts of the aircraft from the investigations. So let's actually look at what happened so we can kind of remember. So you can see Rescue 3 is way ahead of the other ARF vehicles. This aircraft is taking off. You can see the water flying everywhere and then the fire. So I think one of the biggest things is coordination with the tower. There was some confusion. You got to do some pre-planning. A lot of things that go on to make these response drills. Also, just relationships with the tower. Like, we have good relationships with our tower. We would always um, kind of go on their convenience. Um, so you can see this is the taxiway. I believe they were supposed to try and respond on the taxiway or at least hold short and wait for that aircraft to go before um, making their way. And that's where the kind of accident happened. So here it is from the firefighters, uh, one of the vehicles. So you can see it already made that right turn without looking left. They would have seen that aircraft coming at them. There it is, clipping the wing and the front cab lifting up. And then there's the water going. So very important, even with our airport uh, familiarization, like you should know your flights too. So we're going to ask and do a response drill when we know there is a kind of a gap or a slow time at the airport, usually early morning for us. Um, here they are responding. So this vehicle looks like it's going to go respond back to the accident with the firefighters. And then this our vehicle here is going to go ahead and take care of that fire use foam and also protect the passengers that are evacuating. There was no injuries, thank goodness, from this aircraft, this Airbus A320. And then here it is. So there was new construction. I believe it was a new fire department or a fire station, I should say. So a lot of this has to do with it too that comes into factors. There's cones. There's just different paths that maybe they could have took. Um, for the U.S., what we, we follow is FAA FAR 139-319 operational requirements. So within three minutes from the time of the alarm, at least one of our trucks has to be at the midpoint of the farthest runway and then begin application of agents. And then within four minutes, the rest of the vehicles need to be there to, um, to put the agents down. So I don't know, maybe they follow response time similar to these that does put pressure on the vehicles and the ARF drivers to get there. Um, so maybe that played a factor, but here, very important for the personnel is airport familiarization, knowing your signs, your markings, your lightings, and just all the basic things at the airport. Um, and then, yeah, so important to make sure that you call that tower before you do the drill so that they can tell you like, Hey, we have two hours here. We're going to go ahead and call the response drill, um, within those two hours or how, whatever it may be. Um, here is that Charlie Charlie uh, Bravo Hotel Bravo tail number of that Airbus and then here's rescue three rescue one rescue two here's the tower so everybody's kind of within viewing distance of each other and I don't know what frequencies they're on but we're usually on ground and then as soon as we're making our way we switch to tower frequency so the aircraft um, and we can talk to the pilots as well um, here's more of the evacuation so for me, it comes down to having good relationships with the tower, pre-planning all these things, knowing your flight plans, knowing your airport before you do any of these response drills, and then look both ways before entering the runway. But that's all I got.
hopefully, you know, these things don't happen in the future. Good training for ARF just to bring awareness and not get too complacent. All right, this is Arf from Keone. See you guys next time.